pop-up headlights. They're one of the coolest design features to ever come on any car. Ever. You guys know I love them. I talk about them all the time. I wrote a freaking song about it. In this video, I'm gonna run down 13 of the most important cars in the history of pop-up headlights. We've got the car which started the whole thing. The last car that ever had pop-up headlights and a whole bunch of really, really cool cars in between. This is an episode I'm very excited about because it features pop up, up and down headlights. This is D-D-D-D-D-D-D-U-S. Number 13, the Mitsubishi Starion. I'm just gonna put this out there. I'm gonna say it right off the bat. I think that the Mitsubishi Starion is one of the best looking cars on this entire list. It's like a Gundam. And I would also bet that it's one of the most underrated. It's muscular, but supple, boxy, but smooth. It's Starion. Now you may know the Starion as the Dodge or Plymouth Conquest, but honestly, who cares what the badge said? That wasn't even close to being the best thing on this car's front end. That accolade, of course, went to its wonderful, beautiful, original pop-up headlights. The Starion's headlights start on the hood and then finish down by the front fender, which is um, a move. Now the Starion is a great street car, but it was a fantastic race car, winning three SCCA Endurance Championships in 1984 through 1987. The team, they didn't even remove the headlights despite the fact that they technically slowed the car down at night, you know, because of the little thing called aerodynamics. Now that is a true testament to not only how great the headlights looked, but to how rad these racing teams are because what good is winning if you don't look good doing it? Number 12, the Cord 810. Now it wouldn't be right to talk about pop-up headlights without paying homage to the granddaddy of pop-up headlights, the pop-pop of pop-ups. Hidden headlamps, as they were known back then, first appeared on the Cord 810 way back in the year of 1936. It was also the first American car to be made in front wheel drive with independent suspension. And the reason the Cord got hidden headlamps was aerodynamics. It made a blistering 125 hertz purrs from its 4.8 liter V8. And the idea was that having the headlights stored within the fenders cut back on drag and would help achieve higher speeds. It's a great idea. It's a genius concept. And in 1937, they even made it with the freaking supercharger. Superchargers are honestly my top five things that I like the most. Number one, um, my family, obviously. Number two, my dog, who's also my family. Number three, pop-up headlights. Number four, turbochargers. Number five, superchargers. Go ahead and hit the subscribe button so you don't miss anything and hit that little bell next to the subscribe button because uh, every time we release a video, the host is in the comment section for the first hour. So yeah, if you want to talk to me, uh, make sure you watch it in the first hour. To make sure you don't miss it in the first hour, hit that bell. Number 11, the Toyota AE86. Hachiroku! Hachiroku! It's no surprise that this car made it on the list. It's an icon. I feel like I've talked about it a million times. If you want to learn more about it, check out my episode of Up to Speed. I'll put the link in the description. If you guys are anything like me, and if you're watching these videos, I assume that you are very much like me. <laughs> this might be one of the most vivid memories that you have of pop-up headlights. <laughs> Now the 8.6 was the fifth generation Corolla released in 1983. It represents pretty much everything that's good about our culture. Here you got a car, I mean this is a Toyota Corolla, but people are so excited to see them and they are so fun to drive, just so simple. And then at night, you get to have yourselves a pop-up drift party. This isn't the only Toyota on the list. Toyota is actually kind of the king of pop-up headlights, turns out. Don't believe me? I want to quote my good friend DJ Khaled when I say, we the best. Number 10. 
Toyota Celica. The Toyota Celica was first produced in 1970. It was a huge part of why Japanese cars are so popular in America, but it wasn't until the third generation arrived in 1981 that we finally got it with pop-up headlights. Now, the reason for this was a bunch of newly introduced rules that decided that car headlights had to be a certain height away from the ground. Now, this kind of sucked for a lot of car designers of the day who were constantly trying to make their cars as low slung good looking and aerodynamic as possible now the practical fix was to add headlamps which are retracted the majority of the time allowing for the car to maintain its low sleek profile and aerodynamicity it's a word check it out and then they pop up and meet all the safety laws required the celica would keep its iconic pop-up headlights until 1994 when the sixth gen reverted back to normal inboard fixed position headlamps that didn't even pop up or down or nothing that's actually when a lot of cars got rid of pop-up headlights which i'll get into in a second but for now i want to round out the toyota triplets and get into number nine the toyota supra the third gen the third gen was where the supra really became the super quite literally because it was this generation that the Supra and Celica, which had originally shared a platform and used to be the Supra Celica, were separated into two distinctly different models. But now with the Celica changing to front wheel drive, the Supra was free to be what everyone knew in their hearts that it had the potential to be. A rowdy butt Japanese sports car. It also introduced us to the 1JZ GTE. Max, 1J sounds? Oh, oh yeah. Oh, oh, yeah. oh, 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 oh. Number eight. The BMW M1. Woo, this is one of the best looking cars ever made in my opinion. And of course they're good looking. They're designed by Giorgetto, Giorgetto Gigiario. Gigiaro, Gigiaro. Giorgetto Giugiaro. This man is one of the most celebrated car designers of all time. And beginning in the 70s, he went through a period, as all artists do, of dreaming up wedge-shaped sports cars, which would change the way that we think about cars forever. forever. One perfect example of this design ethos is the BMW M1. Now, they made it from 1979 to 1981 in order to be homologated for racing. And the inclusion of pop-up lights allowed him to get the tip of the nose to a very fine point and as close to the road as possible. Ironically, the M1 ended up having a drag coefficient of 0 0.40 with the lights down, which isn't very good. Just for context, this is a 2005 uh, Honda Odyssey and its drag rating is 0 0.30 but we got a bmw with pop-up headlights so i'm not mad i love this car i love this thing look at that good looking bird number seven the lamborghini diablo lamborghini has a great history of using pop-up headlights in their and there's no other way to put this era defining cars starting with the mura which a lot of people say is the most beautiful car ever and a lot more people say is the first supercar ever the countach would also prominently feature pop-up headlights mm, beautiful but both of those iconic cars were leading to this the poster car lamborghini for many of us children of the 90s The Diablo. Produced from 1990 to 2001, this car was the first Lamborghini that broke 200 miles per hour. And it did so with pop-up headlights. Dude, one of my ultimate dreams is to be, just be driving a Lamborghini Diablo. And I got my buddies over there, Nolan's over there driving a Lamborghini Diablo. And Jeremiah's over there driving a Lamborghini Diablo. And they got Joey in the back. And Zach Job over there driving Diablos. And they're all just neon. We're just like screaming on the highway. Listening to Synth Wave. Number six, the Porsche 928. Now, Porsche was no stranger to pop-up headlights. It became a styling cue for all of their front engine 
water-cooled cars of the 70s and 80s. First, they were on the homologated 924 and then on the 944. Porsche even offered the 911 930 with pop-up headlights as part of their slant nose variant. For me though, the Porsche 928 is the Porsche that deserves to be on this list. And the reason is simple yet significant. They rounded the back of the headlights. Can you imagine sitting behind the wheel of a V8 powered Porsche 928 thinking, oh, where'd the sun go? It's getting dark. I better put on the headlights. And then seeing these beautiful little bulbous beauties facing you. Technically, they're kind of reverse pop-ups because when they're retracted, they go back and down and then the lights are like flush. Max thinks they're the ugliest lights on this list. I think they're phenomenal design. I don't care what Max says. This next car makes the list just because it's such a weird car with such a weird story. Number five, the Volvo 480. Way back in the year of 1986, Volvo made their first move into the compact market with this, the Volvo 480. It was their first car to feature front wheel drive and was pretty much entirely developed with American consumers in mind to improve Volvo's presence in the US. It was given pop-up headlights to adhere to our annoying height requirements for headlights on American roads. But despite the fact that it was pretty much entirely developed for the US, after they went through all that trouble, they didn't even release the car in America. In 1988, the exchange rate was so high that the 480 would have cost over $30,000, the same price as that year's Corvette, and it was an economy car. I think they look really cool. Number four, the Nissan 180SX. The Nissan 180SX was sold in 1989 through 1998 as the sister model to the already successful Nissan Silvia. The S13 Silvia, in my humble opinion, is one of the best looking cars ever and one of the only cars that I can kind of draw. And the chassis was so good that Nissan decided to make a hatchback version of the car with a totally different name and a set of pop-up ass headlights. They called it the 180SX. And it was so popular that even after they changed the Silvia to the newer S14 generation, they kept making the 180 for six more years. That's unheard of. Now we got a version of the Silvia and the 180SX here in the States with the 240SX notchback and fastback respectively. Both of them had pop-up headlights, and I also am not really including the 240 on this list because it's basically a Sylvia or a 180SX with a truck motor. Which truck? Find out on next week's episode of the D-List. Number three, the Aston Martin Lagonda. The Aston Martin Lagonda is one of the coolest cars to ever come out of Britain, and a lot of really cool cars have come out of Britain. I mean, TVR exists, but... This car is so cool that literally at Radwood, no less than six donut employees stopped in our tracks and had to take a picture of this car in pictures. It's cool and weird looking in all the right ways, but in person, it's legitimately breathtaking. And I don't say that about a lot of cars. Only 645 were produced in the 14 years that it was made. And it was given some of the most luxurious features and fittings of the time, including touch sensitive buttons replacing practically all of the dials and an early form of digital display. The thing that really cemented this car's inclusion on this list was the fact that it has not two, but four pop-up headlights. All in all, the Lagonda had 10 lights comprising the headlight setup. Number two, Mazda RX-7. Now, a lot of you guys were upset that the RX-7 didn't make it on last week's list about yellow cars. Well, hopefully I'm gonna make it up for you right now because this is the only car on this list where every generation is represented. Every single round of RX-7 has pop up, up, up and down headlights. And every generation of this car looks awesome. The first gen, it's like sharp, 
The second gen has the turbo too. It's like boxy and like ultimate 80s. Got a little hood scoop from the factory. And then, oh, we get to, mm, this one's the best. The FD, that's the third gen. Just like, it's like if Japan made a Corvette. The RX-7 and its cute little pop-ups actually predate the ones fitted on the Miata by over 20 years. And that's why the Miata is not on this list. Don't at me. Honestly, sometimes Miata isn't the answer. What if you gotta go to Home Depot? Finally, the number one car ever with pop-up headlights. But before we get into that, I just wanna give a quick honorable mention to every single car ever that ever came with pop-up headlights because every single one of them is a beautiful winner just like every single one of you. Say it to me right now. Say, I am a beautiful, beautiful winner. Pontiac Firebird, Ford Capri, Nissan Pulsar, Ferrari, Dodge Ford, Daytona, Maserati, DeSoto, Indy, Toyota, MR2, Toyota, Toyota, Maserati, Maserati, Subaru XT. That's all I can remember off the top of my head. Now, if you have somehow kept track of every single car on this list, you might have noticed that there is one very distinct car that is missing. In my opinion, the most influential car to ever be fitted with pop-up headlights and number one, the Chevy. Corvette. The Chevrolet Corvette has been produced continuously from 1953 to the present day. And we were lucky enough to see the inclusion of pop-up lights from 1963's C2 right up until the end of the C5 run in 2004. That is the longest continuous run of any car with pop-up headlights. So much of what made the Corvette great has to do with its hidden headlamps. The, the muscular, undisputed fender lines of the C2 Stingray, the wing-like quarter panels of the C3, the long needle tip front end of the C4. And finally, on July 2nd, 2004, after putting up one hell of a fight to keep them, Chevrolet finally had to give in to automotive safety standards and ditch pop-up headlights, making it the final car to ever be fitted with them. So that is why the Corvette is number one. I hope you don't want to fight me in the comments, but if you do want to fight me, I'll be in the comments for the first hour after this video is released. And I'll be in the comments every first hour after every video is released. Pop-up headlights are like a design icon that were weird. They didn't really make a lot of sense. They actually came from a restriction or a limitation. And I think they're like a perfect representation of everything that I love and I think a lot of you guys love about cars. And so I'm happy that uh, I got to make a whole video about them. Uh, we make a new video every single day on Donut. I'm not exaggerating, we got seven a week. Uh, to make sure you don't miss anything, again, hit that subscribe button. Uh, follow Donut at Donut Media across social media. Follow me at James Pumphrey. I'm excited that I'm able to still make videos for you guys from my garage. Um, and I really just, from the bottom of my heart, Thanks for making this my job and uh, I love you.